Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a very special presentation here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX. It is our District 1 Supervisorial Forum um, with our two candidates for the, uh, the District 1 Supervisor position. Um, the election will be in just a couple weeks here, so we're very happy to get them in. I know they're very busy with their schedules, so we want to thank them for taking the time. Uh, in the studio with us today is uh, candidate Monica Rosenthal. Monica, thank you for coming and welcome, as well as uh, candidate Jose Moke Simon III. Moke, we'll, uh, we'll go with that. Welcome uh, to you as well. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and let the candidates uh, introduce themselves, and then we're going to get it into a series of questions that have been submitted by each candidate, um, and they, they are aware of, of the questions. Um, and then both candidates will get a chance to respond. We are going to give them two and a half minutes per question um, so that we can get through all six of these. So there will be a time limit. There will be a three-minute introduction. And we're going to go ahead and start with Monica Rosenthal. Welcome, Monica, and thank you. Introduce yourself to our listeners. Hi. Um, and thank you for having us on the show. I'm Monica Rosenthal, of course, running for District 1 Supervisor. I've been a resident here in uh, Lake County for 23 years and have been actively involved in the community um, uh, in a variety of different ways. I've raised a couple of kids here. I am a uh, small business owner and a farmer. I farm wine grapes down in, in the Middletown area and have been actively involved in the agricultural community and business community, uh, as I said, uh, for about the 23 years I've, I've been here. Um, I love Lake County and um, I have a uh, planning commission background so and I think my planning uh, um, efforts uh, will come in handy in the future here especially in recovery from the fires and I look forward to serving the uh, folks of District 1 and all of Lake County. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Thank you Monica. Okay we're gonna go ahead and allow Moke to uh, introduce himself. Uh, thank you for being here and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Well thank you for having me today Paul. Um, greatly appreciate the time today. Um, my name is Jose Moksam III. I'm a lifetime resident of uh, South Lake County. I was born and raised on uh, the Middletown Rancheria. I was born at uh, Redbud Hospital. Um, I'm 44 years old. I have a wife uh, and two kids, Joshua and Teresa. I've got two grandkids too, Bentley and uh, Taylor May. Um, I have been involved with the community uh, basically my entire life. I um, am running for District 1 Supervisor because I see, think that it's a very important time here in Lake County's history. And I would love the opportunity to be the District 1 Supervisor representing South County and the rest of the county here as a whole. Um, as far as a business owner, um, I have been the Tribal Chairman of Middletown Rancheria for the past 20 years. Uh, we own and operate Twin Pine Casino and Hotel and the Mount St. Lena Brewing Company. I've um, been involved you know, in that every aspect of that business um, from day one. Uh, I also am a small business owner. I started a heating and air conditioning business two years ago with my uh, brother-in-law, Arrowhead Heating and Cooling. We have four employees down in Lake County. Uh, it's based out of, you know, basically a small van, but uh, just been a businessman and, and um, working in the South County my entire life. Uh, I also coach the high school football program. Uh, I have been doing that with Bill Fultner, someone who I uh, got to play for when I was in high school. And uh, it's a great opportunity, and, and it's a great program in helping shape the lives and the opportunities of the young men going through our program as they move on uh, here and become Lake County residents. Um, as far as a District 1 supervisor, I really feel like I'm a grassroots guy. Um, I've known a lot of folks for a lot of years here in our South County area, and um, I was asked to run by some very, you know, people that I held in high regard for this District 1 Supervisor position when uh, I found out Jim Comstock was not running again. And so I will, you know, gladly um, take that seat if I'm given that opportunity here on November 8th. So 30 thank seconds. you very much. Thank you, Mo. Mm -hmm. Could you just uh, quickly just maybe pull the, there we go, get that microphone up there. You're, you're coming through great, but we want to make sure that uh, you're loud and clear. Okay, now we're going to move on to the question section of our forum. Um, I asked the candidates to uh, submit three questions apiece based on the issues that they feel are most important in their district. Um, so thank you both for, for doing that for us. And we are going to go ahead and start 
uh, with Moke, we'll give you the first question, and Monica, you'll get to answer, and then on the next one, it'll be one of Monica's questions. You'll get to go first, and then Moke's, and we'll move back and forth in that regard. So uh, this question was submitted by uh, Moke Simon. It says, in, the, in this election year, many voters seem to be rejecting formula-based candidates who rely on endorsements and are associated with career politicians and the establishment. How would you define the nature of your campaign, and why do you believe you are connecting with people? You'll have two and a half minutes starting now. Moke? Oh, starting with me. Okay. Yeah. I apologize yes, about That's that. That's okay. <laughs> well, you know, I, born and raised here. I've been here for um, 44 years, been throughout the community. I was lucky enough when I was a young man, um, obviously to go through the mini cannon and also the Middletown high school program. And then I was given an opportunity to go off and play football. Um, when I was a young man, I, um, you know, worked very hard at, um, achieving my goals in life. You know, one of the things I wanted to do was, uh, have the opportunity to play in the NFL. And I was able to do those things as far as a grassroots campaign. I think that's where it all started. You know, I, um, was able to do a lot of things in the you know uh, that a lot of people were proud of here in the county and when I decided to become district one supervisor I really wanted it to be a grassroots campaign and really reach out to the folks that I've known my entire life um, that they saw me grow up becoming a man uh, a young man in the beginning and then an adult um, and really take over the leadership of my tribe and help them take the steps forward that they have over the 20 years. In doing so, really helping the community create jobs, opportunities, and really bring, you know, a little bit of life to South County. Some of the largest um, expansions and job opportunities have been with the Middletown Rancheria, and I've been incremental in doing those things uh, here in the South County, creating jobs and opportunity. Throughout the district, you know, I have friends all over, Lower Lake, Hidden Valley, those types of things. The most important endorsements for me are the people that I'll be representing, which are the constituents that are going to vote on November 8th, in which I am separated. If you look at my campaign stuff, I think there's a few local endorsements that I've been able to get. But as far as it goes, it's the people that are going to be backing me on November 8th to step into the District 1 position. And really, that's where I think the grassroots campaign comes through. 30 seconds really reaching out to the people and people have seen the hard work that I do not only at the job but also down on the football field coaching their children both in the Pop Warner level and the high school football level to really just be a part of the community and that's what I always want to do and I've said it from day one we had some great candidates when we started this for district one there was four quality people now they're down to two um, I would like to be that individual but I will always be a part of this community and working very hard to make it a better place Thank you. Same question for you, uh, Monica. We'll go ahead and shorten it and just summarize. How would you define the nature of your campaign and why do you believe you are connecting with the people? And you will have two minutes, <laughs> two and a half minutes starting now. Okay. Um, well, I guess I would also like to answer uh, a little bit on, uh, you know, we have our current assembly member who is currently running for Senate, and he just picked up uh, um, a very rare endorsement from Governor Brown. And, uh, and then we also have an active city council member from uh, down in the American Canyon area who was very instrumental in fire recovery and assisting our uh, community when we were at the Calistoga Fairgrounds. And uh, she had an incredible list of endorsements and actually ran unopposed in the June primary for um, the election for a supervisor seat on the Napa uh, Board of Supervisors. Um, and so the premise of this particular question um, is uh, strikes me just as a little bit that perhaps maybe it should be about what what do endorsements signify and I think that it's all part of a big package and as Moke said it's grassroots and that's kind of here in Lake County I think almost every campaign is grassroots I myself have started running uh, for Lake County Supervisor because it was a group of my friends uh, people that I know people active within uh, District 1 who encouraged me to do so and then I reached out also to various different people uh, to leaders of the community community as well as to uh, county state and officials uh, or federal officials to see if if they would support me because I know that to run a campaign it costs money and you also need to know that you have the backing and support and that people do in fact believe in you uh, to follow through the mission we have uh, we have a lot of recovery to do here from the fires um, and as we all know c without the assistance on uh, both a, a county state and federal level level 
um, it, it, our, our efforts would be hampered. So we really need to uh, embrace that. And that's what I am very proud of the wide variety of endorsements that I have. Um, I have, you know, from uh, community members from all throughout uh, District seconds. 1, as well as throughout Lake County, uh, county officials, state and federal. And um, I'm proud, and, and actually I stand in awe of some of those relationships I have developed over the years. While Moke was working um, in the rancheria and uh, coaching football, I've been out in the community on a number, serving on a number of boards and representing the people of District 1 and Lake County, and that's how I've garnered this support. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Okay, now we're going to move to a question submitted by Monica. This question goes to both candidates again, and Monica, you'll answer first. Uh, many residents in Middletown and Kelseyville have expressed opposition to Dollar General stores from being located in their communities. What is your position on this project? Monica, you will have... <coughs> Two minutes, two minutes, two and a half minutes now. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not sure that I need all two and a half minutes for this project, but, uh, you know, basically I agree with the Board of Supervisors that this particular project, um, as they're grappling with the design and environmental review element of this project, and they have submitted it back to the Planning Commission for that review. Um, I believe that this project, as presented in the Middletown area, uh, for this retail store establishment located at the site that it's uh, being requested to be built at does not currently comply or conform with the Middletown area plan or with the intention of the of the general plan. Um, so and that's something that needs to uh, is still in the process and needs to be worked through. Um, I would you know in in um, there's different ways to go about doing this so that we so this project perhaps had moved moved forward more smoothly. I've been involved before with the pre-planning meetings for different projects where you sit with a variety of, of uh, different community entities or, or agencies that are involved and the, the developer would actually work out these issues prior to presenting the project to the Planning Commission. In this particular case, the project came forward without a, a finished design or perhaps the developer thought it was finished i'm not quite sure but it was not approved by the planning commission the the issue was appealed and sent to the board of supervisors the board of supervisors then took took a look at it and they were able to approve the project with the exception of the design and environmental review piece and so have kicked that back to the planning commission to have that re-reviewed um, as of yet, that uh, is not finalized. And uh, again, I guess my position on this project is uh, that uh, the design needs to conform to the Middletown area plan. And I'm not sure at this particular site if it can do that, but that's still yet to be seen. Thank, Thank you, you, Monica. And uh, Boke, we'll give you the same question. Uh, many residents in Middletown and Kelseyville have expressed opposition to Dollar General stores from being located in their communities. Uh, what is your position on this project? You will have two and a half minutes starting now. Well, from day one, what I said, and I think Monica touched on most of these things, is, you know, it needs to meet the Middletown area plan, and it also needs to meet the requirements of the county. And at this point, um, not being the district one supervisor or on the board of supervisors, it has been voted on to go to the you know the the planning department or the planning commission, and it is still under review. So, like I said from the beginning, if it meets the requirements, I'm all in favor of creating jobs and opportunity for economic development in South County. I think it's one of the most important things that needs to be done, but it needs to be done in the right manner, and that's been my position from day one. As far as opportunities, there are few and far between in our area, and that's something we need to concentrate on as District 1 supervisor. Um, so if it's still being addressed uh, after the first of the year, which it most likely will be, and the new District 1 supervisor setting in there, there will be a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure that this thing is done with all the final requirements that it needs to meet if the project is going to go forward. And if it does then we need to be able to work together and make sure that it is going to be a value to the community and make sure that they're giving back to our local area to help both with the schools and other opportunities for jobs. And that's the most important thing. And that's been my position from day one. If it meets the, the, the zoning requirements for the land or the property, and it meets the requirements of the county and the general plan of Middletown, 
um, whether it makes everybody happy one way or the other. Um, though that's the reality of where we're at. So that's my position. It always has been. Uh, it needs to meet the requirements. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on to the next question, and Moke will keep the microphone right in front of you. This one's going to go to you first. What are your top priorities for District 1, for Lake County overall right now, and how would you accomplish your long-term vision for economic growth in the South County? And you'll have two and a half going now. Well, obviously, top priorities in District 1 are recovering from the fires that we've had. You know, obviously, the Rocky, the Jerusalem, the, the um, Valley Fire, and the, now recently the Clayton Fire. Top one priority is rebuilding the homes and getting people that are currently homeless or displaced at this point. And it is a monumental task. We are still reeling from the Valley Fire. Uh, there are folks and friends and family who are just getting into their homes at this point. Uh, final, you know, touches going on in the house, the houses. Um, I just had dinner the other day with talk to a family that they should be moving in in the next, next couple of weeks. And there are still a lot of people who are undecided, working out the insurance, seeing if the prices are going to come in right so they can rebuild their homes so they're not underwater when they're completed building the things that they had before. So these are some of the main priorities right now for myself in District 1. And when I talk about that, it's being able to help folks through all the processes, whether they were uninsured, insured, or underinsured, um, to get back in their homes or to make a decision whether or not they're going to reinvest in our community. And hopefully we can convince more uh, to do that than the ones that um, potentially may want to move away. And we have had some of those. There are going to be some real challenges I think in the Clayton fire, because there has not been a declaration um, put together. So the, the federal FEMA is not going to be coming in. There's going to be some help. There's been the FMAG, but the cleanup process and everything is going to be a little bit different uh, for the Clayton folks. And it really is going to take a community effort um, with everybody in Lower Lake, uh, Clear Lake, may, you know, even some of those folks who are affected uh, to rebuild and give those people the same opportunities. There are a lot of groups, Team Lake County, there are going to be a lot of faith-based groups come in to help people make decisions on what they're doing. And those are the things that I want to make sure that we're concentrating on. Second would be economic development and growth. We talked a little bit about the Dollar General. I think that's the hot topic right now, but I think there are going to be some unique opportunities for big projects that are have been in the pipeline for a while for development in our area, and we need to be supportive and see if those things are really going to come to fruition. And also be working with our neighbors in Clear Lake. There are some great projects that they have up there, and we need to be supporting each other as a whole county. Thank you. Thank you, Moke. We'll turn this over to uh, Monica. What are your top priorities for District 1, for Lake County overall right now, and how would you accomplish your long-term vision for economic growth in the South County? My top priorities for, uh, for District 1 is fire recovery, economy, the health of the communities, meaning the people and the lake, and to serve the, the uh, district with integrity. Um, you'll see that stated on my ballot statement that I submitted uh, early August. Um, and that has always been, with the exception of fire recovery, uh, that has always been uh, my, my priorities from day one when I uh, started running uh, or decided to run for a supervisor in 2015. Of course, uh, following that and uh, um, in February of 2015 is when I started running and, uh, and then we were hit with the Valley, f well, first the Rocky Fire, the Jerusalem and uh, the Valley Fire and now of course the Clayton Fire. So of course my priorities have changed and uh, fire recovery is, as Moak was, was mentioning is first and foremost in getting people back into to a safe and secure environment. I was just up in uh, Lower Lake uh, yesterday and uh, was very saddened to see that as I walked down the street there was a gentleman sleeping outside under the bush um, with a blanket and uh, that is just unacceptable and um, so c you know with um, moving on to to priorities and how we're going to accomplish that I cannot wait uh, to start serving as district one supervisor and be able to roll up my sleeves and actually get to work I feel a bit frustrated on you know it at looking at and seeing this devastation and not really being able to to do anything or being limited with uh, what I can do to help my community. Um, so I look forward to uh, being able to do that as the next District 1 supervisor. My long-term vision 
vision for, for District 1 is economic growth and development. And we need affordable housing, and especially in the fire, we just lost the apartments. And again, we see that Lower Lake has been uh, uh, very devastated by the Clayton fire and, um, and again, needs housing in that location as well. Uh, businesses, variety and diversity. 30 are, seconds. So Harbin Hot Springs needs to come back. So, um, and we need to work diligently on that. Enhancing what we have is very important. And, you know, when, again, when I first started running, I list the, the uh, we have many, many great attributes, starting with the Middletown Rancheria, which is a wine-themed casino, the Calpine Geothermal, um, the businesses that we have. Um, it, we have lots to, that we can develop and we can grow, and I look forward to doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. We'll go ahead and uh, keep you right there at the microphone, and we'll go to the next question. Agriculture and tourism are both a major part of Lake County's economy. What role have you played and or what role will you play to preserve and protect agriculture and to attract and promote tourism in Lake County? Monica? Oh, um, agriculture and, and tourism have been uh, a huge part of our past, our present, and uh, I sure hope that they remain a, a huge part of our future. Um, as the, the Lake County Ag Report just reported that the gross value of Lake County agricultural crops was up by 9%. Um, and, of course, the, uh, that is led by uh, wine grapes, pears, and, and walnuts, and uh, agriculture is a, a job multiplier. Um, I want to talk just a few minutes about uh, selling grapes out of the county um, because that's something that, that we do. And, again, I think in the diversity mix um, with all of our, our crops that we grow, it's important to, to have diversity, to sell some of them outside the county, to gain name recognition for Lake County, as well as to develop uh, those avenues inside the county for tourism benefit. Um, and that's, you know, within the, for grapes, it's the wine industry, for pears, um, it's, you know, various different agritourism and um, uh, some other uh, venues that we can, we can pursue in the agritourism area. Um, for, for, um, for wineries, I served as the executive director for the Lake County uh, Winery Association during the time of the recession. Uh, when I started, there were 24 wineries. When I left that position, there were, um, I believe it was 34, 35 wineries. And so it's really nice to see that industry and that tourism piece of, of Lake County grow and blossom. Tourism brings new money uh, to our county, and it creates jobs. And I think that's, that's very important. Um, we need to pursue a number of different avenues. And one of the things is, uh, that I really value is the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program, which is currently training a number of people here in Lake County about the various different pieces and elements of tourism so that we can attract tourism from all different avenues and venues, whether it's outdoor adventure, whether it's, it's our culture, our uh, Native American culture, our, um, our, our wine industry, our ag industry. Um, it all comes together, and, and I think that's uh, something we really need to pursue with diligence. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Okay, over to Moke. Same question. Agriculture and tourism are both a major part of Lake County's economy. What role have you played and or what role will you play to preserve and protect agriculture and to attract and promote tourism in Lake County? In the operation of our facilities down in Twin Pine Casino, um, we recognized that agriculture is a huge part of Lake County years ago. Um, as uh, my opponent said, you know, our casino is the only wine themed facility in the country and and we did that or at least in the state on this side i will say of arizona <laughs> um just to make that straight um what we did was we saw the future of the agriculture and the wine industry really blooming here in lake county you know when you design a facility um, as an old winery and that's what we did we saw the benefit um, both for our community and the opportunities that were coming down the road and agritourism is something we've been involved with kind of on, on the fringes. We obviously do the, uh, you know, every year you have the, the wine associations, big deal that you do, uh, the big winery festival that's done every year. We also um, do winemakers dinners. We have them on once a month trying to make sure that we really give the opportunities here to the, to the businesses in Lake County to promote their wines. We also have our own label that we've been working with one of the local wineries, and, and it won a gold medal in the Press Democrat last year. We also are seeing the benefits of 
tourism through the wine industry, you know, we're even potentially looking at starting up our own wine club. So it's a great opportunity here for our area um, to really, you know, piggyback on the wine industry success. Um, there was a question I was asked earlier in my campaign about how we would keep or how I would help keep the grapes that are grown here in Lake County in Lake County. And that was a, an, 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 a very interesting question. My immediate answer was, for Middletown Rancheria, we are looking to get into the winery business. We have currently purchased 15 acres uh, at this point, and we'll be doing that more and hopefully a winery here in the near future. So we could also use all of our marketing ideas and really pinpointing people to get them up here for tourism from the Napa Valley and the Bay Area. And that's what we'd like to do. As far as agriculture, I completely could support the industry. Like I said from day one, everything needs to be done responsibly. There are some big projects that are happening that we're involved with at this point that we are in favor of uh, that are going to be going in in South County. And we really like to see the opportunities create more jobs and opportunities for the folks in our area. But it has to be done responsibly. Water is always an issue, and it needs to be done uh, throughout all the regulations and monitored correctly. Thank you, Moke. All right, we're going to move on to the next question here, and uh, Moke will leave you at the uh, right. at the mic here to uh, okay. to start this one. The next question is: Given the requirements of the Brown Act, how will you? Am I doing this in the am I on the right? No, let's move <laughs> to the. Uh, no, that's right. right. I'm in the right one. Yeah. yeah Given the requirements right. of the Brown Act. How will you advocate successfully for District 1 among the competing interests of other supervisors and important countywide issues? The Brown Act is very interesting. You know, um, this was um, something that is new to me. I'll be, I'll be very honest. You know, the way that I operate on everything is an open book in working with trying to produce things as far as my leadership role in um, Indian country. As far as being a District 1 supervisor, it would be making sure that I'm communicating in the right manner with all the interests on the Board of Supervisors to help move District 1's ideas and opportunities forward. Making sure that they're open to the public, making sure that we are always informing individuals as we move forward on any projects and opportunities that may be worked on behalf of my district. There are a lot of opportunities, I think, that are coming up in Lake County but as long as we do that in the right manner, we make sure that the meetings are open, that it's a public forum as often as possible. Um, those are things that I would be working on in trying to get push my agenda for our agenda forward. And that's something I always want to stress on. It's the agenda of the constituents of District 1 and trying to create um, opportunities to really make our county and our district uh, one of the best in the area. As far as the county as a whole, it would just be communicating with all the Board of Supervisors and making sure that um, everything is done in favor of all the constituents in the county, whether it's a project for the lake, whether it's a project for economic development, um, just making sure that everybody is known, the process that we're going through, and um, that's what I would do. Thank you. Let's move over to Monica. Same question. Given the requirements of the Brown Act, how will you advocate successfully for District 1 among the competing interests of other supervisors and important county-wide issues? Um, well, as you stated, uh, this question came from Moak, and um, so I know there's a lot of emphasis on the Brown Act, and I guess I uh, find it, which, which I think it's very important in, in operating in, in complete transparency to the public about uh, um, the public's business is very, very important. And uh, working for the people and for their interest is, of course, uh, first priority in, in serving in capacity in an elected position by the people. Um, but as Moke stated, uh, this is relatively new to him. For, for me, I've been working in and around city and county government for, for quite some time now. Uh, my job as planning commissioner when, when I was uh, serving the folks as uh, the District 1 as planning commissioner, um, I had to do the same thing, work within the confines of the Brown Act and work to achieve <coughs> success on projects. Uh, you have five planning commissioners, you need, a three, you need at least three votes in order to move a project forward. So it's that working in collaboration, and sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. You have to kind of pick your battles. But in understanding the community and the community needs um, and making sure you know exactly what those battles are, um, I think is, is very important as you push forward and, again, work collaboratively with uh, not only your fellow supervisors but with other agencies and, and organizations within Lake County and within District 1. 
Um, I have successfully advocated for educational behavioral programs uh, for kids. I uh, saw it right down in the middle of uh, District 1, right, right down the street from my house in Middletown. I fought to preserve the uh, agricultural land, um, and I did that, you know, kind of standing with just myself and a couple of people. I didn't, um, didn't uh, break any Brown Act rules or what have you. <coughs> Uh, for Measure N, um, again, I fought, you know, to to uphold the community safety. So, so again, uh, through all the different boards and uh, through the Farm Bureau board and uh, advocating for for agriculture, uh, both in Sacramento and in Washington D.C., I'm very familiar with the Brown Act and and uh, feel very comfortable with working within it and representing the people well. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Okay, we are moving through these questions quickly here. So we're going to have some time at the end uh, to address some, uh, some other issues. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our final question here that was submitted by the candidates. Um, and then I've got a, a special question that I'm going to kind of surprise you guys with at the end. I kept it to myself just to, just to keep with the element of surprise. But we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll address this final one here. Uh, so this will go to you, Monica. People often say we need jobs in Lake County. What are your thoughts on this, and what is the impact on Lake County? Yes, we do need jobs in Lake County. We need a job in housing balance. Uh, we need a skilled workforce uh, in order to be able to maintain those, those jobs or maintain the businesses that provide those jobs. Uh, we need to be working better with our schools, which I think you know, we're, we're beginning to do a, a very good job with, and, and I'd like to pursue, pursue that with diligence. Uh, vocational training is very important within our schools so that we're actually training kids um, and <coughs> matching the needs of our of our local businesses working at pursuing uh, better business and quality business here in Lake County and that going back to Dollar General I'm not quite sure that Dollar General is the answer to that uh, because I'd like to pursue businesses that actually provide a future and a career path um, so that we maintain and improve and enhance our community um, and have jobs for our youth as well as um, our, our seniors. So, um, so the impact on Lake County overall is that we need a skilled workforce first and foremost because without that the impact on Lake County is that our economy suffers. Um, it's really hard to bring in business and I'll give an example in the Middletown area we uh, we lost a business there and basically it was because they time after time and again couldn't find trained technicians to work and operate and it just became too frustrating to continue to operate the business and um, constantly be looking for a trained technician so so these are things that we need to we need to improve uh, both you know again working with our school system and uh, working with the businesses that we attract here and um, and and doing some internships also you know for supplying that with our with our students and our kids uh, the other thing in the area of uh, of agriculture is I'm a big supporter of uh, 4-H and the FFA programs which I think provide our kids with some really strong leadership skills and uh, we instill those in them and then they go away and then they come back to agriculture and that's we have so many advancements in agriculture that we can be working on also to employ our youth so um, much work to do there, and I look forward to uh, being a part of it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Okay, we'll move right over to Moke. Same question here. It says, people often say we need jobs in Lake County. What are your thoughts on this, and what is the impact on Lake County? We do need jobs in South Lake County. For over 20 years, that's what I've been doing as a leader is creating jobs in South Lake County. There are more opportunities, I think, right now on the cusp than there's, there has ever been. And creating jobs for our community are number one. You know, we had a forum just a few weeks ago uh, over at Woodland College, or a couple weeks ago. And that was something in talking with the, the folks up there is creating jobs and opportunities. You know, we have over 330 employees in our business. We have restaurants. We have communications. We have IT. We have hotel. We have everything on our property. And what it would be really unique would be able to create some courses that are right here in the county. So kids not can graduate high school. If they want to be a technician. If they want to be an IT guy. If they want to come in and have some other opportunities and jobs that we have always created, I think those are unique things. And those are the things we need to build on. 
You know, we need to, we talk about it a lot, but creating jobs is something that I've been doing for years at the south end of the county as a leader and giving ourselves opportunities. And what that will do, obviously, is give people self-worth. A paycheck is one of the biggest things that can happen for an individual. May not be working for a while, but those are things that will really encourage our folks to stay here, to work hard, and to really look for opportunities to be a really good resident of South Lake County. There are some unique opportunities, I think, coming up uh, for our area. Like I said, in some large projects, there's, you know, the Valley Oaks project's been talked about for a while. And a couple other development projects that really I think we need to get behind as a community and, and really benefit ourselves by not only building housing, but other opportunities here in the South County. And the way that will impact us is it will put more people to work, more expendable cash, and opportunities for those folks to invest in, you know, being a, and a good partner and a good community member. As far as how that will impact us, that, that would be great. There's one other job-creating opportunity that I think seconds. that is coming down the pipe is, is the potential, um, you know, of the marijuana industry becoming a legitimate business for priority jobs. And not only will there be jobs in growing, there will be trimming jobs, there will be transportation jobs. And some folks in our community, those may be the only jobs that they may get into first. And I think it would be... the give them a really unique opportunity to make it a profitable business, bring it out of the darkness, into the light, and make sure that they become good parts of the workforce. Thank you, Moke, and uh, thanks to Monica. That will uh, conclude the uh, question <laughs> period here of our forum. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes left, so what we're going to do is I've got a, a question I'd like to ask both of the candidates, and then we'll, we'll get into a closing statement. So uh, if you watched the presidential debate the other night, um, one of the questions that was asked, I think it was the final question yeah. of the debate was, what is one thing you could say about your challenger or your, your opponent? What is one positive thing that you could say about your opponent? And uh, we'll start with you, Monica. Uh -huh. A uh, positive thing I can say about my opponent is actually um, I acknowledged and uh, recommended uh, my opponent and the, and the Rancheria uh, for their work that they did uh, for the, Fall the, vire, the Valley, Valley Fire Recovery, um, initially providing the venue, providing the space for all of us in the community to get together and uh, to meet and work towards healing our community uh, right from the get-go was, was very important uh, right after the Valley Fire. And um, I, I find that also very Im important in the Lower Lake area now following the Clayton Fire. And I'm, I'm delighted to see the, the Lower Lake Community uh, Action Group come forward in, and do that. And several other folks there in the community, the fire chiefs, the uh, the brick hall, you know, all of that is is very important. But but anyway, back to my opponent, you know, yes, the Middletown Rancheria and Moke Simon uh, did a, a fantastic job providing that space and that venue and the leadership there immediately following the Valley Fire. Thank you for that, Monica. Mm -hmm. Moke, same question. Can you uh, name one positive thing about your opponent? Yes, you know, from from day one, like I said, it, this was. There were four quality candidates, I think, um, that stood up for District 1. One thing that I can say for Monica is I truly believe um, that she cares about our community. And she is dedicated to what she is going for in District 1. You know, I want to be the one elected on November 8th for the <laughs> District 1 supervisor. But like I said from day one, if that is not the case and the constituents choose Monica, I know she will, you know, she will do just as I would, work hard for the community, and I will definitely support her to that point. Um, you know, most people think that this is the time when you attack folks, mm -hmm. but I think it's so important right now for District 1 to make the right decision, and I think, um, you know, they have two folks to do that. I don't think we are got as many undecideds as you, have, as you have at the presidential election at this point. So. Mm -hmm. That's thank you, Mo say. and thank you, Monica, for answering what's probably a difficult question to be sprung on you just like that <laughs> yeah, okay. during the forum. But I, I appreciate yeah, your yeah. candor and your honesty uh, throughout this entire event. We do have a couple more minutes before we get to the closing, um, the, the closing statements, and I want to bring up the the fire situation. Our, our the devastation obviously is is visible. It's uh, it's in the news. It's it's just permeating our our county, and it's all been centered in your 
district primarily. So we'll give you, we'll give you a couple minutes each to address the fire situation where we need to go, where we've been. If you want to go there, uh, just a, a general thought and and how are we going to rebuild and, and and become stronger out of this situation? We'll start with you, Moke. You know, obviously, still reeling from the devastation. Um, you know, the Valley and the Clayton fire, you know, uh, the Valley fire was, you know, over a year ago now. Um, but as soon as, you know, the, the Clayton fire struck, it brought back immediate memories and what we were going through. So a, as far as the long-term recovery, it really is focusing on the housing. There were over 1,300 homes burned in uh, the Valley fire. You know, about 500 of those were, you know, apartments, rentals, and that's going to be a real struggle because usually when you're in a rental to rebuild, you know, you usually didn't have renter's insurance and those types of things. That's going to be a huge part of how we come back and we recover here. Uh, you know, obviously we had the declaration, so some people got help from FEMA, uh, you know, and also from the state, and, and those are things that are not going to happen for the Clayton folks. Uh, there will be some cleanup dollars that will go to that effect, but it really will be a complete community effort on how we rebuild. You know, like I said, Team Lake County with Hope City, Mennonite Disaster Services, also, you know, um, oh, Habitat for Humanity, Mr. Burke's program uh, that he currently runs there in the county, are going to be very important in getting individuals back into homes and how we rebuild our communities. It is devastation, hopefully, that we'll never, ever go through again. But we need to, in rebuilding, remember what happened and why it happened. We need to think about our clearances around the homes, how we rebuild. And it is, you know, like I said, a long-term three- to five-year journey, potentially even more, before we get back to where we were. But it, it needs to be concentrated on and not forgotten. For those who were just evacuated, it may seem like it's a long ways away, but those people who lost their homes are going to be dealing with this for the rest of their lives, and we need to really you know, uh, concentrate on getting them back and give them opportunities to feel whole. Thank you, Mo. Same question for you, Monica. What, where are we going with this uh, in your county with the, the rebuilding, and what, where have we been uh, in response to the, the recent devastation of the fires? Mm -mm. Um. Yes, you know, I hate to experience such devastation, but uh, uh, but for better or for worse, with uh, with this kind of great devastation, also comes great opportunity, and uh, with with housing, with uh, other, uh, with our infrastructure, we have an opportunity to build back better. Um, we were talking about jobs a few minutes ago, and uh, with jobs, I mean, I can't tell you how nice it is to hear contractors back at work. You know, while I really hated seeing the uh, my neighbors in the trailer in the the FEMA mobile home unit that they're living in, um, you know, right, you know, I mean, I look out my office window and there they are. Um, but now I see one of my neighbors is, you know, they've got a wonderful house going up, and I hear the, you know, the hammer and nails going all the time, and and it's a wonderful sound. Uh, people are back at work. Um, and so that's, you know, that again is, is an opportunity that's come out of this devastation. We do need to, uh, I think as I stated before, I mean, housing is first and foremost and, uh, and getting some affordable housing in uh, both, uh, all the communities actually that were affected by the, the fires of 2015 and our recent Clayton fire. Um, again, at Building Back Better, one of the things is infrastructure and learning from our mistakes or learning from what was before. Uh, one of the things, you know, we found our water systems. Uh, we need to truly improve our water systems. You know, when I hear my neighbor, um, my, one of my other neighbors, who is a retired firefighter, and he left when he was told to seconds. evacuate, and he could have stayed and saved his house because, as I said, he was a retired firefighter, but he expected um, firefighters to come in, but they were out of water. Um, and so that's something we need to work on, learning from our mistakes, improving, uh, creating that defensible space very very important um, and I know our fire chiefs are, are all on top of that we as a community uh, law enforcement uh, here as a community we need to work together so we rebuild better thank you thank you Monica and we are now going to move into our closing statements uh, each candidate will have two and a half minutes to summarize and wrap up our forum here today before we get into them just want to say thank you again for participating with us both to Monica and to Moke thanks for coming all the way here to Lakeport and uh, our listeners are going to be more informed because of it so we're going to go ahead and start with Moke we'll give you the opportunity and we'll close out with Monica you'll have two and a half minutes starting now 
Well, thank you very much for your time today, Paul. Really appreciate it. Uh, reaching the constituents is, is the most important thing. Um, and also getting folks out to vote on November 8th. Um, as you know, my name is uh, Jose Moke Simon III, running for District 1 Supervisor. Uh, there will be um, a few more forums, I think, coming up here in the future. October 19th, we'll be at the Luncheon Club uh, down mm -hmm. at the Senior Center. Uh, this Thursday night at 7 p.m., we'll be at the Town Hall. Uh, please come out if you are undecided or have more questions at this point. It's a very important decision coming up on November 8th. Here um, in South Lake County and Lake County, jobs and economic development growth are a big part of what we need to do over the next decade. And it's something that the District 1 supervisor and all the supervisors will do here in the county uh, to help move us forward. We are one of the poorest counties uh, in the country, and we really need to put light to that and get some real opportunities for folks and, and get ourselves out of that hole. We are a beautiful, beautiful area, and that's why I live and make my family and my life here, uh, because I understand um, how beautiful it is. And we just got to get that message out to the rest of the world. And that is something that we need to do both through marketing, uh, job creation um, here in Lake County, and I would love the opportunity to be the District 1 supervisor. And that's what I'm working hard for between now and November 8th to convince you that I am the one for that job, and I'll work hard and diligent during my term as a District 1 supervisor. With the um, fires, you know, we, we just got through speaking about, speaking about rebuilding um, the homes and the opportunities that people have. Uh, and that is going to be a challenge, but we can do it together and we work hard and diligent in that manner. There are homes going up now in Middletown uh, being built by Hope City. Uh, Mennonite Disaster Services will be coming in eventually. Um, and those are things that we really need to concentrate on. The housing and economic development growth all tied together. How we're doing those things are going to be very important moving forward, and we really need to really concentrate on uh, those opportunities that are coming down the pipe. We also need to be ready to embrace the new industry that may be coming here in Lake County, which is uh, the potential marijuana industry, um, which may legitimate, legitimize some jobs and give us some unique opportunities that we really need to get our heads around. Thank you. Thank you, Moke. Monica, your turn. Yes, thank you, Paul, and thanks again for uh, having us. And as Moke said, that uh, getting out to vote on uh, November 8th is very important on a number of levels. Um, but uh, most important to Moke and I here, it's uh, voting for your uh, District 1 County Supervisor. Um, so uh, thank you. And uh, um, the reason, why, again, I'm, I'm running for supervisor is uh, because I, I feel I have a lot to offer to the uh, District 1 community, uh, to all of Lake County. I've been actively involved and uh, have achieved many things over the last 23 years in a wide variety of areas. And uh, that's one of the things I think is most important in, in uh, what I bring to the, to the supervisor position as uh, the next dis District 1 supervisor. I have a strong planning background, both working as a uh, planning commissioner, which will uh, uh, be very fortuitous uh, as we move forward to uh, rebuilding and, of course, developing the county. The county. I also have served uh, for five years as the as a director with the Farm Bureau, and have represented the agricultural industry here, as I uh, previously stated, both in uh, Sacramento and in Washington D.C., advocating for uh, agriculture uh, here in Lake County. Um, and um, and then economics again that's just dear and near to my heart I'm a director with the Middletown area merchants and uh, have been actively engaged and involved in the economic development the regional economic development uh, committee working on economic development in fact that's I spearheaded the economic forecast event uh, that was held in South Lake County immediately following the Valley Fire when uh, realizing that the impact of the Valley Fire uh, both that day on September 12th, 2015 and, and forevermore was going to have great economic impacts not only on South Lake County but also on the all of Lake County. And of course now with the Clayton Fire adding to that, um, so we have lots of economic development to do, and that's a, uh, an area that's very dear and near to my heart. Um, and I believe I can bring a lot to that uh, to improve and enhance what we have here in Lake County. I encourage you to get out and vote on November 8th, um, and I'd be honored to receive your vote. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Monica. And again, we want to say thank you to both of the District 1 supervisorial candidates who came out here today, Jose Moke Simon III and Monica Rosenthal. And as both candidates have stated, it is very important to get out and vote on November 8th. Uh, and we, uh, again, thank you to both of you for, for coming down and spending some time with us today. So that's going to wrap it up for us uh, for this forum for today. Be sure to join us tomorrow at noon when we bring you the District 4 supervisorial candidates in for their forum on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX. Have a great day.